Hello students. Welcome to this particular session. Let me first confirm with all of you. Sushrunt Aditya Good evening Pavan Kumar Nishank <coughs> Very good evening to all of you Priya Darshini Just follow the truth, quickly give the confirmation and then we can start. Priyanka, good evening. I'm good, Priyanka. We will now look into the practical problems quickly. Trinath, Priya, good evening, good evening. We shall now look into the practical areas of the questions as well. Hopefully you would have gone through those small sections as well as the disallowances part which are being there. Because you will find the practical questions which has been put up by the ICI. Ben, good evening. Which has been put up by the ICI has to do with all these points that we are going to discuss it just now <clears throat> so far as the small sections is concerned students if you see your module also either you will <coughs> either you will find this coverage of the small deductions like 43b student there is one section 43b which talks about the deduction of certain specified expenditure the deduction of certain specified expenditure only if that particular amount or the expenditure has been paid. So that is like <coughs> 43B provision which is there. You will find that students that these sections essentially would be targeted only in the form of an adjustment. Like some small adjustment add in less kind of a thing that you have to do. Because you have to disallow it. And if you have to disallow it then you need to add it back. Isn't it? So, such small adjustment is what would be required in this particular context. Such particular small adjustment is what would be required in this particular context. So, in that regard, students, in that regard, <coughs> what we will deal with, what we are going to deal with it would be, I will, on the request of some of the students, will quickly go through, quickly all these small sections once, because that is what many students have requested in the last lecture. And then we will quickly then get into some of the practical questions which are being there. So here in, <coughs> in the context of the small deduction students, let's get started with this one. The first one, now you will take this particular slide is slide number 12. Slide number 12. <coughs> so, herein, <coughs> the first one, 3611B, premium paid by the employer for the health insurance of the employees. So, therefore, the employer has made the payment or like a group insurance policy, something of that sort has been taken and therefore, the employer has made the payment of the premium. So, what is the treatment of that particular premium amount? So, therefore, they have said that the treatment of this particular premium amount shall be the premium paid by the employer for the health insurance of the employee. This premium would be allowed as deduction. <coughs> this premium would be allowed as deduction. But only condition is that this should not be paid. The mode of payment should be other than in cash. This is one thing that you should be careful about it. 
So if they say clearly that the premium which is paid by the employer on the group medical insurance policy of the employee and that premium is not paid in cash, then in that particular case, this amount will be allowed as, allowed as deduction. 3612, which is about the bonus and commission paid by the employer to the employee. Now, in this regard, students, <coughs> just you can do this and rest of it, you can just skip it. Here in, rest of it, when I say, up to here. <coughs> this case law, or I can just put it across it. So, the, so here in, the point which I have earmarked, you can just delete the same. The point which I have just earmarked, you can just simply delete the same. Where the bonus due to the employee is paid to the trust, such amount is subsequently paid to the employee, all that, up till the due date, up till what? The due date, you can just delete the same. You can delete the same students. Okay. Now, this part students is very important. One particular aspect which has been there. <coughs> In this situation, subject to the provision of section 43B, meaning thereby whenever 43B comes into play, whenever 43B will come into play, what is that understanding that you will have? That the deduction of this amount would be allowed only when the actual payment, actual payment has been done. So, if the actual payment has been done, that the deduction of these amounts would be allowed to the SSC. So, these are all subject to the actual payment students. So, therefore, just be very careful about the same. Whenever 43B reference would be given. However, in the very first year, in the very first year students, you have the grace period also. That is, you can make the payment of these specified items. You can make the payment of these specified items up to the due date of filing of the return of income up to the due date of filing of the return of income and that is section 139.1. So, if supposingly if this bonus and commission is pertaining to the previous year 1920, if this bonus and commission, if it is pertaining to the previous year 1920 and if I make the may, if I make the payment on or before the due date of filing of the ROI, which in your case happens to be 30th of November 2020, which in your case happens to be 30th November 2020, then in that case, I will be allowed the deduction of this bonus and commission in this previous year 1920 itself. In this previous year 1920 itself. Because I have made the payment, because I have made the payment of the bonus on or before the due date of filing of the ROI. There can be one more angle students in the examination that they can give it to you on bonus and commission. One more angle can be there. You will say, sir, what is that angle? So, that is about the case where, <coughs> student, that is about the case where the bonus which has been given, the bonus and commission is say for a previous year 1819. Say of previous year 1819 and that bonus and commission of previous year 1819 has been paid on 1st of December 2019. That bonus and commission of previous year 1819 has been paid, when it has been paid? On 1st of December 2019 and if that is the case, we will say, say what? That for previous year 1819, this bonus and commission shall not be allowed as deduction. For previous year 1819, this bonus and commission shall not be allowed as deduction and it will be allowed as deduction only in the previous year 1920. Then this bonus and commission will be allowed as deduction only in the previous year 1920 students. And that is how you are supposed to look upon in this regard. So students, if you see over here, so subject to the provision of section 43B, deduction allowable only on actual payment on or before the due date of furnishing of the ROI under section 139.1 irrespective of the previous year in which the liability to pay arises and 40A2 angle students is also given it to you. <coughs> 40A2 angle students. Now there is one more disallowed section 40A2 students. Do you know what is 40A2? What is this 40A2? Just let me know quickly. Let me see. How many of you can answer this? What is this 40A2? <coughs> Quickly. Forty A two. Fair enough, students. 
42 So 48 two students is in respect of expenditure that you have made to a related party. Yes, Pavan. Pramnath, yes, it is. Expenditure which you have made to a related party. In that particular case, whatever is the excess of the expenditure. So if you are doing a transaction, say with your related party, and therefore say may my, my relative, my own relative with whom I am doing the transaction. And I am purchasing the goods from him. I am purchasing the goods from him. Then I may try to convey to him that look, I want to reduce my profit for the current year. So kindly do one thing. Give me an over invoicing in that transaction. Because whatever is of 10,000, I will pay you 15,000 and give me the bill of 15,000. And in any case, the money is coming to our home itself. Because you are a relative. So therefore, through this over invoicing route, I am incurring an expenditure which is in excess of the fair market value of that transaction and therefore whatever is the excess of the amount whatever is the excess of the amount that much portion of the excess students will be disallowed under section 40A2 that much portion of the excess will be disallowed under section 40A2 this is what this 40A2 says so 40A2 excessive or unreasonable part of the expenditure is disallowed that is how it has to be considered in this regard Okay, so therefore, if a bonus and commission, if I am paying to my relative, I am an employer and I am paying to my relative bonus and commission in excess of the an amount, in excess of an amount or in about the <coughs> fair market value, then whatever is the excess amount that I have debited, whatever is the excess amount that I have debited students, that excess amount will be disallowed. Now, students, coming to this particular part, in this context, <coughs> The next one, students, if you see 3614, 3615, and 3615A, all these sections taken together. Now, what happens in these sections? Students, these are the case of the employer. ER is the employer. Here, if you can see over here. Okay, so employer contribution. Towards these, approved or the superannuation fund. These are all the approved fund where the employer is making the contribution. Employer contribution in these particular approved fund. Okay. 3615 is about the employer's contribution again to the approved gratuity fund. Approved. Fine. 3615A, the next one, students, is about the employee contribution. Now, how the employee makes a contribution? We all know these, these funds which are meant for the employee benefit. With these funds which are meant for the employee benefit. A portion of the amount is contributed by the employer. A portion of the amount is contributed by the employee. That is to say, from the employee's contribution, the amount is reduced. From the employee's contribution, the amount is reduced from their salary. From their salary, it has been deducted. And that is the portion of the employee's contribution along with my contribution. I am going to put up. Where am I going to put up this particular amount? So, students, I am going to put up this particular amount in these respective funds. Now, the question is, students, be careful. <coughs> as far as my contribution is concerned, I am the employer. As far as my contribution is concerned, this is an expenditure. Why it's an expenditure? It is going from my pocket. It is an expenditure which is going from my pocket. So, what the law says, the law says this, that for the employer contribution, for which you are looking at to section 3614 or section 3615, that is the employer contribution to the recognized provident fund or the superannuation fund or the approved gratuity fund for that employer contribution you can make the deposit on or before the due date of filing of the ROI the same thing that you have learned for the bonus and commission the same thing that you have learned for the bonus and commission is also extended to is also extended to the employer's contribution that is extended to the employer's contribution students and it will be allowed as deduction. It will be allowed as deduction if the contribution is made on or before the due date of filing of the ROI under section 139.1. <coughs> Employer contribution. So, same example which I have given it to you for bonus and commission that your due date for previous year 1920, the due date to file the ROI will come by 30th November 2020. By 30th November 2020, if I 
the employer makes their contribution my own contribution before the due date of filing of the roi then in that particular case i will be allowed the deduction on the same previous year 1920 in computing my pgvp but the twist in this case students is that of the employee contribution the twist in this case students is that of the employee contribution you will say sir what kind of twist there is so students a twist as i told you is in respect of the employee contribution in the employee contribution students what happens the employer from the salary of the employee they deduct the employee contribution the employer from the salary of the employee they deduct the employer contribution employee's contribution so please understand one thing the employee contribution is not the employee contribution is not an expenditure of the employer do you all agree because from your salary only i am deducting your contribution fine so the law says be careful the law says this that the moment the employer deducts from the employee contribution deduct from the salary of the employees their contribution employees contribution that it will be considered as the income of the employer so it will be considered as what as the income of the employer so it will be add income why it is an income because i have deducted from the salary of the employees employee contribution so i'm going to add as it this is my income and then i the employer will be allowed a deduction of that amount which i have already have considered as the income i the employer will be allowed the deduction of that amount which i have already considered this as an income only if only if what only if i make the payment of that amount on or before the due date of filing of the roi sorry on or before the due date of of the fund itself do you know students as such you are not supposed to know but for your knowledge purpose itself i am just letting you know the due date of these funds students be careful the due date of these funds comes in the next month itself to make the deposit the due date happens in the next month itself every month next month itself this will be the due date so employer who has deducted from the employee salary employee's contribution who has deducted from the employee salary the employee contribution this employer will be allowed the deduction this employer will be allowed the deduction only when i have made the deposit of the employee contribution before the due date of the fund not the due date of the roi for my contribution i can deposit up to the due date of the roi for my contribution i can deposit the money up to the due date of the roi but for the employee contribution which is already considered as my income for the employee contribution which i have deducted from their salary and which is already considered as my income if i want to claim a deduction then i need to make a deposit i need to make a deposit on or before the due date of that fund itself or else it will not be considered for the purpose of deduction at all it will not be considered for the purpose of deduction at all <clears throat> so if i have to say students to you just last point pay attention if i have to say to all of you is this that employee contribution supposedly i make the payment after the due date of the fund okay will i still be eligible to claim a deduction in respect of the employee contribution if the employee contribution i make the payment on or after the due date of the fund will i be still be eligible to claim the deduction in respect of the employee contribution and the answer is no whereas as far as the employer contribution is concerned employer contribution is concerned if i make the deposit of that employer contribution my own contribution and i make the deposit even after the due date of the fund still i will be allowed the deduction of this particular employer contribution even though i make the deposit after the due date of the fund still for my contribution i will given the deduction so this is one point that you should be very very careful about it students so far as your examination is concerned <clears throat> so in this regard students in this context if you see over here carefully <clears throat> see the employee contribution this is your employee contribution students this is your employee contribution this is your employee contribution 
so what it says contribution received by ssc from his employees to the fund from his employees to the fund okay so the first effect would be it is a first effect of such amount it is an income income of the employer whose income income of the employer second effect deduction allowed okay now in this regard such amount is credited by employer to the employee's account in the relevant fund on or before the due date of the roi in this case herein will be allowed as deduction i'm just putting it like this will be allowed as deduction is the question to be asked will be allowed as deduction is the question to be asked and to that the answer is no the gujarat high court now this case law name students at least in your ipcc level you are not supposed to remember the case law name so i'm just deleting it so as to avoid any confusion the the high court has held that if the employer fails to make the payment of the employee's contribution employer fails to make the payment of the employee's contribution on or before the due date of the fund then the deduction under section 3615a shall not be allowed thereafter thereafter he will not be allowed the deduction did you all got this one students so just keep this particular point in mind for your contribution employer contribution you don't have to worry why you don't have to worry because can you see over here for the employer contribution students be careful you in this regard for the employer contribution you have that magical 43b for the employer contribution you have the 43b as the provision but for the employee contribution so if you see over here students within the due date of 13991 this is for whose contribution 3614 and 3615 is for whose contribution this is for students this is for the employer contribution <coughs> this is for the employer contribution so that things which is there in the highlight 43b within the due date of 13991 so this is meant for meant for the employee contribution now 40a7 again one more disallowance students 40a7 says that no deduction for any provision made by the ssc for the payment of the gratuity so provision for gratuity students provision of gratuity to his employees will you get deduction and the answer is no why you will not get deduction because 43b is given to you and what 43b says deduction allowed only on the actual payment and if the item is covered under 43b if the item is covered under 43b then the deduction in respect of that payment then the deduction in respect of that payment will only be allowed under under payment basis only will be allowed on payment basis then that exactly one point that you all need to take into account students that is one point that you all need to take into account fine herein now with that particular proposition students herein let's come to like quickly in this context 3619 the family planning expenditure students family planning expenditure now if you see over here the family planning expenditure the company allowed only to a company can you see herein the company only is the one which will be eligible to claim the deduction now if the expenditure is revenue nature if the expenditure is revenue nature then in that case full amount will be allowed as deduction then in that case full amount will be allowed as deduction whereas if the expenditure is capital in nature if the expenditure is capital in nature then 1/5 would be allowed as deduction and that would be allowed for a period of 5 years 1/5 will be allowed as deduction and that will be allowed as deduction for a period of 5 years so that is one thing that has been to be considered okay so that one point students just you will keep in mind allowed first of all only to the company not to any other person and revenue expenditure 100% capital expenditure only 1/5 now coming to the next one point students 3613 3613 year in now this particular expenditure students is interest paid in respect of the capital borrowed so whatever is the interest expenditure which i have paying for the capital which i have borrowed will the interest expenditure be allowed to me as a deduction and the answer is yes provided provided what provided the loan which i have taken the capital which i have borrowed that is been used for the purpose of business 
so if it is used for the purpose of my business then the interest expenditure on such loan amount or the interest expenditure on the capital borrowed that interest expenditure will be allowed to me as a deduction that interest expenditure will be allowed to me as a deduction that is point number 1 now point number 2 students in this regard point number 2 students be careful is one proviso which is there to section 3613 just you will remember this point students very carefully this is an important one this proviso to section 3613 Now, what this proviso says, students? Just all of you will put pay attention to this one very, very carefully. As per this proviso, students, if I am taking a loan to acquire the asset, if I am taking the loan to acquire the asset, then in that case, can I say that the loan has been applied for the purpose of business and profession? If I have taken the loan for the purpose of acquiring the asset, can I therefore say? that the loan has been applied for the purpose of business and profession yes very much i can say that the loan has been acquired for the purpose of business and profession the loan has been acquired for the purpose of business and profession it definitely can be said that the loan has been acquired for the purpose of business and profession <coughs> but interest expenditure on such loan amount students be careful pay attention now the interest expenditure on such loan amount up to the date the asset is put to use up to the date the asset is put to use that interest expenditure has to be capitalized that interest expenditure will be done what will be capitalized so the interest expenditure up to the date the asset is put to use that will be capitalized be careful and only after the asset is put to use any interest expenditure which is incurred after that asset is put to use that the interest expenditure will be allowed as deduction this is what this particular point means so what it says from the date of capital borrowed till the date the asset is first put to use from the date the asset is borrowed till the date the asset is first first put to use what you are going to do in that case <coughs> capitalized with the cost of the asset capitalized with the cost of the asset and what about this one allowed as deduction after the asset is first put to use after the asset is first put to use that once the asset is put to use the interest expenditure incurred thereafter the interest expenditure incurred thereafter will be allowed as deduction but be careful but be careful this is subject to subject to what subject to don't forget your favorite section 43b so sir sir here also 43b exist yes on my right hand side the condition part i have already made, made a mention 43b students in respect of interest on loan will be applicable that is to say the deduction for interest on loan will be allowed if you have made if the loan has been taken where the loan has been where the loan has been taken from bank or financial institution in such particular case the interest on such loan will be allowed to you as a deduction only when you make the payment only when you make the payment and as i told you earlier also if 40, if you, if your expenditure is covered under section 43b be careful and please take this always in your mind if my expenditure is covered in section 43b then in that case i have the grace period to make the payment i have the grace period to make the payment up to the due date of the filing of the return of income so if i make the payment for 1920 if i make the payment on or before the due date of filing of the return of income then those expenditure on which 43b is applicable which includes also interest on loan amount taken from taken from whom the loan taken from the bank or the public financial institution so all these expenditure will be allowed to you as a deduction in the same year but you say no sir i have made the payment thereafter i have made the payment thereafter thereafter means after the due date of filing of the return of income then in that situation the expenditure uh, sorry then in that case the deduction of that expenditure will be allowed to you as a deduction in the previous year in which previous year in the previous year in which the amount has been paid in the previous year the amount has been paid <coughs> in the previous year the amount has been paid
okay so this is what the situation is in this regard so if you see over here very carefully in this context <coughs> 36 36 one three a students this is a discount on this is on what discount on the zero coupon bond the discount on the zero coupon bond so pro rata basis the computation has been made so the pro rata the competition has been made so when you talk about this one <coughs> when you talk about this particular part one pro rata competition herein discount is equal to if you see maturity value of the bond minus what the issue price of the bond so students you will find these small small things coming in your small questions and all i'll show you where the ic has picked up all these small small questions questions which are based on the these small small sections so it is like what discount like just simple logic students debentures i am issuing okay issued at 80 redeemed at 100 issued at 80 redeemed at 100 so the difference of 20 that difference of 20 will be allowed as deduction on a pro rata basis that deduction of 20 will be allowed to you on a pro rata basis so that is how it has to be considered so on a pro rata basis that the deduction will be allowed fine students in this case <coughs> so students if you see 3617 now 3617 bad debts students bad debts this is an important section mark this to be an important one students very important section for bad debts please read this one quickly all of you two minutes time You will read this particular part only and then this part. So, what I am marking it, just stick with that. Or also through with this.
Ashwini is asking, sir, is it that till put to use? No depreciation, no interest allowed and after put to use, both are allowed. See, Ashwini, uh, the asset has to be put to use only then the depreciation will begin. Okay, until that time, whatever is the interest expenditure that you have incurred, till that time, whatever is the interest expenditure that you have incurred, that will be capitalized. That will be capitalized. Okay. Till the time the asset is put to use, whatever interest expenditure that you have incurred, that will be capitalized. And after that, after what? After the asset is put to use, after the asset is put to use, that whatever interest expenditure is incurred will be allowed to you as a deduction. Will be allowed to you as a deduction. Now, after this one, students, 41th of section 4, herein. Now, let us look upon to the deduction of the bad debts. Now, in the context of the bad debts as a deduction, students, please pay attention. The deduction of bad debts would be allowed if you satisfy both the condition. And what is that both the condition? Number one, like simple visualize students, there is a credit sales. There is what? A credit sales. And because of that credit sales, there is a debtor position that would have been generated. Because of that credit sales, so it is like what? A debtor's account debit to sales account debtor's account debit to sales account so that is what will be the position that will be determined thereafter thereafter the debtors would be in the balance sheet side debtor would be on the balance sheet side fine now the debtors being on the balance sheet side you are going to write it off the debtor's account in your books you are going to write it off the debtor's accounts in your books of accounts and therefore that write off of the debtors in your books of accounts will give you the deduction of bad debts. So there are two conditions, students. Repeat for with me. Two conditions are there if you want to claim the deduction of bad debts. Condition number one, there the amount which you are writing off subsequently as bad debts, the amount which you are subsequently writing off as bad debts, this amount should have been considered as your income earlier. And that is the reason why I gave you the general entry. What is the general entry? The debtor's account debit to sales. Where the sales goes? PL credit side. So, did you offer that amount as your income earlier? Yes, you have offered that amount as your income earlier. Thereafter, subsequently, subsequently, what you are supposed to do? Whatever is the debtor's account in your balance sheet, whatever is the debtor's amount in your balance sheet, you will write it off in your books of accounts as the bad debts. You will write it off in your books of accounts as the bad debts. And that is what will be the reduction of the bad debts that will be allowed. <coughs> After that, in this regard, after that, in this regard, if you see over here very, very carefully, 41 subsection 4, this is what students deemed income. Deemed income students is this that subsequently, subsequently, if I have claimed the deduction of bad debts by writing off the debtors in my books of accounts, by writing off the debtors in my books of accounts, I have already have claimed the deduction of bad debts, isn't it? So, if subsequently, if subsequently the, <coughs> I have done the recovery of bad debts, I have done what? The recovery of bad debts. So, whether that recovery of bad debts, will it be considered as your income? Whether the recovery of the bad debts, which you have done, will that recovery of bad debts, will that be considered as your income? And the answer is yes. Why? Because I gave you the deduction earlier, but that deduction is a false deduction. Why that deduction is a false deduction? Because subsequently you have recovered the amount and therefore on the subsequent recovery, that amount will be considered as a deemed income. That amount students will be considered as what? As a deemed income. Did you all got this one? So that is one point which you should be careful about it students. That should be one point that you should be careful about it. <coughs> okay. So that is one thing that you should be very careful about it in this regard. So students, this is one thing which is to be considered thereafter. Thereafter what? 36, 113, 36, 118. Now students, banking cash transaction tax, security transaction tax, commodity transaction tax is allowed as deduction by virtue of these sections. Section number 36 only. Remember only students, section 36. No need further of the clause number. And finally, students, finally what? Finally, the general deduction. The general deduction, students, 
And what is the general deduction? 37.1. See, let's read this one general deduction together. General or allowable deduction under, under PGBP expenditure point number A not covered under 32 36, point number B not being personal in nature, point number C not being capital in nature, point number D not being prohibited by law or an offense, and point number E wholly and exclusively incurred for the purpose of business and profession. So, if there is 32 36 covers all these specific expenditure. 30 to 36 students. What about 30 and 31 by the way? Let me ask you students. What is this section 30 and 31? <coughs> what is this section 30 and 30 and 31, Pramnath, Nishank, Pavan Kumar, Priya, indeed, the students are saying correct answer. So, I think they have already have done it. So, very good. Good to know about that. Rent, rate, repair, insurance, taxes, municipal tax, which is paid in respect of if it is paid, these rent, rate, repairs, insurance, if it is paid in respect of building, it is section 30. If it is paid in respect of building, it is section 30. If it is paid in respect of plant and mustery and furniture, then it is section 31. Plant and mustery and furniture, then students, it is section 31. Then it is section 31. So these are the two sections, 30 and 31. That is what you will always keep in mind, students. Fine. Now, on that note, if you see very carefully, on that note, if you see all very carefully, that 30 and 31 is over there, plus 32 we have already have done. What is 32? 32, your favorite section, depreciation. After that, selective sections, whatever are there, the big deduction. These big deductions were there in 35. Namely, 35 AD, specified business, 35 scientific research, Scientific research has two parts. Thereafter, 35 triple C, 35 CCD, that skill development, agricultural project. These are the big deductions. And after that, 36, 36, what we have done today. So these are the if the expenditure is covered in the specific provision, then the specific provision will apply. But if it is not covered in the specific provision, if it is not covered in the specific provision, then students game on. You are in section 37 you will then be under section 37 and in section 37 you will find point number a not covered under 32 36 point number b not being personal in nature point number c not being capital in nature not being prohibited by law or it is an offense like penalty levied in a law in a law penalty has been levied on you which law say gst law penalty has been levied on you disallowed students disallowed why it is prohibited by law isn't it? And point number E is what? That expenditure should be wholly and exclusively incurred for the purpose of business and profession. So that expenditure should be wholly and exclusively be incurred for the purpose of business and profession. Only then the deduction would be allowed. Only then the deduction would be allowed. So this is precisely what is the way in which a deduction would be taken into account. Now, Shunt, if you see herein, I am going to take my CSR expenditure students. Any CSR expenditure, please note on one thing. You will be given in the examination points like CSR expenditure. You, I think all of you are aware this is corporate so social responsibility expenditure. If that CSR expenditure is given to you in any form, like a donation, uh, let setting off of the school or setting up of the hospital, whatever is the CSR expenditure is incurred, not allowed as reduction students. Okay. Similarly, 
a company giving freebies like free medicine to the doctors and all all the freebies not a lot of reduction now apart from that what did tick mark show just focus on the tick mark part point number 5 which is about fines and penalty i was just discussing with you right now under statutory scheme what do you mean by statutory scheme meaning under a law which can you give me the i have given you the example under the law i have given you the example of that like gst example is a gst and in that there is a fine and penalty and a deduction will be allowed no these fine and penalty will not be allowed as deduction but if the penalty is out of a contract between you and me student between you and me we are having a contract and in that contractual scheme that the penalty is being imposed in that contractual scheme that the penalty is been imposed then whether the deduction will it be allowed and the answer is yes incurred for the purpose of incurred in the course of the in the course of the business and profession so this will become yes students in this regard so out of a contractual liability the answer would be yes if you see the next one for an activity considered as an offense for an activity which is considered as an offense or which is prohibited by law we have already have discussed that what it will be no isn't it <coughs> but interest expenditure students what is disallowed is what is prohibited like penalties and all because you have broken the law and therefore i am putting a penalty on you but interest is a delay in the payment payment of what payment of say gst then it is not a fine or not it is a penalty it is not a payment that you are doing in consequence of in consequence of breaking a law there is a delay but you have not broken the law it's not crime isn't it and therefore students for the interest will you be allowed as deduction and the answer is yes so that is one thing that you should students keep in mind in this context and i think that tick mark and point number 7 students also there are lot of advertisement that you do in the newspaper of the political party isn't it advertisement students that you do in the newspaper of the political party you may be aware of that there are many of the newspapers which are being put across in the political party so therefore the ad, the company or the ssc who is doing their advertisement in the newspaper it is actually a donation that you are giving to the political party and therefore under the head pgvp this donation is disallowed so will it be allowed as deduction no because it is equivalent to donation given to the political party so therefore no deduction would be allowed however how are students here there are these two section chapter 6a students in chapter 6a in chapter 6a these deduction will be allowed to you in chapter 6a these deduction will be allowed to you and that exactly how it has to be considered that exactly how it has to be considered did you all got this one did you all got this one fine students and that has that is how the things has to be looked upon very very carefully now with that students we are done with this now this is not required students this is also not required so please delete this particular part 3617a 3617a please delete this particular part also 3617a okay 3617a 3535a we have already have touched upon this amt also we have done in the last lecture so this is the the atwg double is there students but i'll do it a bit later not now chapter 6 reduction is there now 40a2 and 40a3 now friends i will do a selective scheme now please read 40a3 now all of you 40a3 and in this 40a3 from here till the last rule 6 dd exception 2 minutes time friends quickly 2 minutes time <coughs> yes dsb bribe protection money all are disallowed bribe and protection money two minutes time friends 43 last time you are doing it right now and thereafter you will do it only in the examination time quickly
प्रियंका इफ यू आर थ्रू विद इट्स रन जस्ट लेट मी नो क्विकली so here students first of all understand one thing here one is about 40a3 which is about the expenditure which you have incurred obviously cash expenditure we have been talking about it there are two limits students one is the 10000 limit one is the 10000 limit and another is the limit of 35000 be careful on that one is the 10000 limit and another is the limit of Thirty-five thousand. Now, what is this thirty-five thousand limit? First, try to understand. If Reliance Industry for their transporters, if Reliance Industry for their transporters who are transporting their goods from the factory to the customer premises, who are transporting the goods from the factory to the customer premises, if they are giving the amount in cash, if they are giving that amount in cash to these transporters who are transporting the goods to the different premises then in that particular case students then in that particular case what we will say we will say that the threshold level will not be then 10000 to see whether it is allowed or disallowed then threshold level will increase to 35000 then the threshold level will increase to 35000 and only then if the amount exceed beyond 35000 then in that scenario the disallowance would be applicable then in that case the disallowance would be applicable so when you make the payment to gta to your gta for transportation of the goods so in that context the threshold of 10000 will be substituted to threshold of 35000 now there is one section 40a3 and below that 40a3a you will say sir what is the difference between the two the difference is very simple students if say previous year is 1920 if in the same previous year 1920 i have incurred an expenditure of say rupees 15000 and on the single day on the single day in one of the day on a single day in previous year 1920 itself on a single day in previous year 1920 itself aggregate of my all payments otherwise then by way of an account pay check or by way of an account pay draft or through other prescribed electronic means if my single day aggregate payment has exceeded by more than rupees 10000 then then the expenditure which i want to allow in 1920 the expenditure which i want to claim as deduction in 1920 that expenditure will get disallowed that expenditure students will get disallowed the expenditure which i want to claim in the year 1920 that expenditure will get disallowed but you will say sir but if supposingly in 1920 there is no default like the expenditure you have claimed in 1920 but the payment has been made next year next year the payment has been made then what will you do will you disallow in 1920 no then you don't disallow in 1920 students if the next year the payment is made if next year the payment is made then in the next year it will be so what will happen in 1920 there will not be any disallowance in 1920 there will not be any disallowance but in 2021 in my example it was next year you can say also sir four years afterwards i am making the payment whenever you make the payment now You have not made the payment in 1920. No, you have not made the payment in 1920. So wherever you make the payment now, in that very year, it will be considered as deemed income. In that very year, it will be considered as deemed income. That is what 40A3A. That is what is 40A3A is all about. So if it is in the same year, so if it is in the same year, then 40A3. If it is in the subsequent period, any year, then no disallowance. then no disallowance in the year in which the expenditure is incurred but in the subsequent year or the year in which the payment is made in that very year the deemed income will be considered or deemed income will be determined <coughs> so this rule 6dd is very important for your ipcc intrc sorry and we all know what this rule 6dd is all about now rule 6dd is about about what students exception where you can continue to make the payment in cash continue to make the payment in cash in excess of 10000 or in excess of rupees 35000 without any disallowances without any disallowances you will say sir what are those cases so those cases are in front of you 
those cases are in front of you now in that regard students <coughs> in this regard if you see very carefully 35000 which has been there 35000 well, sorry just read this one students quickly i think payment to the government say gst example gst paid to the government gst paid to the government in cash gst paid to the government in cash so will that be allowed as deduction and the answer is yes thereafter if you see bank is closed and because the bank is closed that the payment has to be made will it be allowed as deduction again the answer is yes payments are made to the agent students payments are to be made to the agent here in forget payment to the agent just tick mark whatever i am just doing Pay, payment to the government bank is closed bank is closed what is the reason why the bank is closed public holiday or strike students bank is closed what is the reason for the bank is closed public holiday or because of strike that is important payment to cottage industry students tick mark this then uh, <coughs> like this e payment a uh, debit card and all you can just tick mark this also payment to the cultivator or the grower or producer of agricultural of agricultural production payment of agriculture produce please write payment to the cultivator or grower of or producer of the agriculture produce so directly to the agriculturist directly to the agriculturist you are making the payment if directly to the agriculturist you are making the payment will that be allowed as deduction and the answer is yes it will be allowed as deduction even though the payment is not made so this is a tick mark students which i have done and no bank service available in that place no bank services is available in that place that is what students you should always keep in mind like now i don't know whether any even today village are having a bank at least they have got the cooperative bank so i don't know whether we have found any place where we can say that it is not served by any bank i haven't came across with any such thing i don't know if these things exist or not be that as it may we don't worry about this, these things now coming back to here in <coughs> all of you will pay attention to this one students now 40A7 students I have just now done provision for gratuity is it disallowed yes it is disallowed 40A9 also I have done like if you see what is allowed as deduction is approved employer's contribution students employer's contribution to the approved funds or to the recognized funds recognized employee funds that is what is allowed as deduction employer's contribution to the approved or the recognized funds that is what is allowed as deduction so if i am making the payment for the unapproved or unorganized funds will that be allowed as deduction will that be allowed as deduction and the answer is no if I am making the payment to these unapproved or unorganized funds, will that be allowed as deduction? To that the answer is students, no, it will not be allowed as deduction. Okay, so any unapproved fund, employee, employees fund, employee funds, which I am as an employer making the contribution, I will not be allowed any deduction whatsoever. Did you got this one students? Now 40AI and 40AI, I am not going to touch upon right now. 40AI this i want you to go through it once 40 ai 40 ai a can you see these things these things i want you to go through it quickly not today as your homework i will be touching upon these things tomorrow i'll be touching upon these things tomorrow i'm just quickly going through to 43b students 43b please come to 43b the last one didn't i told you about 43b students here in <coughs> certain con Certain deductions to be allowed only on actual payment on or before the due date specified in section 139.1. This particular part. <coughs> so, students, herein. Now, students, one suggestion before we can proceed further, which I have got from the students, they say that, sir, we have to also study at our end. So, why don't you, in fact, take across our last moment? Like, last moment is they have told me that 9 o'clock. At, you start at 9 o'clock so that we can throughout the day we will study our stuff and 9 o'clock sir we will do a revision of that income tax with you so that is the proposal so 9 to 10 30 or 10 45 is what students have some students have said to me is that okay if we do it if because obviously your studies are also equally important so this 
proposal that some students have given me that sir throughout the day we will study and maybe do us a dinner time when we are having our dinner at that time we will watch it so that our time is also saved in this process that is a suggestion which some students have given me that during the dinner time we are listening and we are participating so that our time is also saved in that way and we are also equally uh, like uh, are revising also and also we our time is saved <coughs> so what is your take students 9 o'clock is some suggestion which i have got it and i thought that maybe let me convey to the students so in that very case if every one of you are all okay with it then we can then consider 9 for me it is okay for me it is not an issue at all but at your side quickly let me know students <coughs> Nine p.m. Nine p.m. to ten thirty, ten forty-five. So after that, you can sleep and get up early in the morning, and then start studying. Use your full day of your study. Use full day of your study, uh, and thereafter you can take it forward. WhatsApp group, yes. Just tomorrow, one day. Just give me one day. Saturday, I'll just prepare the WhatsApp group. On Saturday, the WhatsApp group would also be there. So I think if all the students are agreeing to this. i think let's stick with that then it is in fact a good suggestion considering the fact that we are now in september fine so therefore you are doing your self study so your time is not like you are not feeling like okay enough of time is going isn't it so it is an approved uh, particular thing so it is approved not it is not unrecognized it is recognized by all of you isn't it so 9 to 10:30 10:45 tops okay we will do our revision so that there is without pressure also we can do consistent revision while you are having dinner or so you can just keep on doing the revision okay you can keep your this thing 9 o'clock that time and have your dinner around that time and so that you are doing real time basis saving time also and that is the best particular way to take it forward okay so i'll start tomorrow at 9 o'clock and that's all 9 to 10:30 10, 10:45 10, we are going to stretch it up now friends 43b is the last point which i'm going to do 43b and then i am going to switch to some practical problems now what is this 43b students <coughs> note from tomorrow we'll start at 9 o'clock so 43b students 43b what exactly it is as now we have seen all the items all the items students we have seen tax duty cess or fee all the indirect tax so if it is linked in 43b if it is written in 43b what does it imply you have to revise like this it will imply that the deduction of the specified amount will be allowed only on actual payment will be allowed only on actual payment and point number 2 students point number 2 would be that these particular payment students these particular payment should be made when the payment should be made so these particular payments should be made if not in the same year at least on or before the due date of filing of the ROI to get the deduction to get the deduction in the same previous year to get the deduction in the same previous year and if you miss that due date of filing of the ROI and you make the payment later on after the due date of filing of the ROI then in the year in which the payment is made in the year in which the payment is made in that very year the deduction would be allowed in the year in which the payment is made in that very year the deduction would be allowed <coughs> So first year only students just be uh, just be careful only in the first year you have that grace period grace period of making the payment on or before the due date of filing of the ROI only for that first year period so keep that particular point thereafter if you don't have made the payment you make the payment later on so that later year you will get the deduction so all these things which I have covered tax I have covered employer contribution I have covered bonus and commission I have covered. Interest part I have covered here. There is one important point, students. One very important point that I will discuss. Now, <coughs> the same thing. Point number E also. Interest part. Same thing. Same thing. Okay. So from the loan from the banks and all, they are being covered over here in this particular context. Then this is the leave and cashment, students. Point number, point number F. Some payable by the employer in lieu of any. leave to the credit of his employee so this is your leave encashment remember a leave encashment salary that you pay so even that leave encashment salary salary students <coughs> even if the leave encashment salary students which is the given 
in that case the deduction would be allowed the leave in cash payment students that deduction would be allowed so that is how it would be considered point number g now students here in pay some payable to indian railways for use of railway asset now you remember now there are many of the uh, railways assets are like train is taken on hire for the transportation of their goods so only when you make the payment to indian railway only when you make the payment to the indian railway for the use of say their uh, their train facilities for the transportation of their goods so that time only the deduction will be allowed and last one is about the interest on the loans and advances from a scheduled bank interest on any loans and advances from a scheduled bank accordingly the same treatment would be given now students here there is one point which i wanted to <coughs> discuss with all of you just pay attention and one point students over here is sometimes what happens please pay attention sometimes what happens is that the the Uh, the, the the borrower, I have taken the borrowings. Okay, I am not in a position to make the payment to the bank. So what the bank does? Do you know what the bank does? Bank then make some sort of a rehabilitation program. Now you say, sir, what is this rehabilitation program? As per these rehabilitation program students, the bank will will make a kind of a package. As per that particular package, as per that particular package, what the bank will do? the bank will say that this outstanding interest i will make this as your principal students outstanding interest whatever the outstanding interest which i am not in a position to make the payment to the bank the bank makes that outstanding interest as my principal portion the bank make that outstanding interest as what as a principal portion and thereafter thereafter what that principal portion is what is is been paid the principal portion is what is been paid so that principal portion which is paid by the bank later on maybe in parts doesn't matter maybe in parts doesn't matter but that particular principal portion which earlier was an interest so please understand one thing one time they have asked a question in your ipcc earlier which was if the bank has converted the interest amount into principal portion if the bank has converted the interest amount outstanding interest amount as your principal portion will this conversion will this conversion be considered as payment of the interest amount what is your take students will this conversion be considered as a payment of the interest amount will it be considered as a payment shall i consider this to be a payment now <clears throat> what is your take students shall i consider this as a payment and the answer students just a conversion which i have done just a conversion if i have done of the outstanding interest amount into a principal portion merely a conversion students is not equal to payment merely a conversion is not equal to payment so please don't give any deduction to the borrower i was the borrower so merely on the conversion so there was an outstanding interest which i am yet to pay so the bank what it did they said that your outstanding interest we will convert into a principal amount we shall convert into a principal amount so question therefore is whether the conversion of the outstanding interest into a principal amount will this be considered as a payment of the principal amount answer is no and the answer is no the conversion is not equal to payment the conversion of outstanding interest into a principal amount is not equal to payment and hence no deduction will be given but if please pay attention students but if subsequently subsequently that principal amount is repaid if subsequently that principal amount students is repaid now can i say that this subsequent repayment subsequent repayment of the principal amount can that be considered as subsequent repayment of the principal amount can that now be considered can that now be considered as the payment of the interest amount <coughs> can that be now considered the principal amount which i am paying now which in one time in one time it was an outstanding interest one time it was an outstanding interest so when today i am paying that principal amount which one time which was an outstanding interest so now can i say i am making the payment of an interest 
can I now claim a deduction of that interest amount which is actually a principal which is now converted into a principal can I now claim a deduction students and the answer is yes so in subst although in the form today when I am making the payment in form it is named as payment towards principal but in substance we all know in substance students we all know it is the payment of a interest amount it is a payment of the interest amount so in substance we all know it is nothing but a payment of a principal amount and therefore therefore what students therefore it will be allowed as deduction therefore it will be allowed as deduction did you all got this one students so just keep this particular point in mind that just like this that uh, converge just write please write it students there itself or somewhere just write I'll just dictate one line <coughs> conversion of outstanding interest conversion of the outstanding interest conversion of the outstanding interest into a principal loan amount into a principal loan amount shall be shall be considered Shall not just like please write like this. Shall not be considered. <coughs> shall not be considered as a payment of interest. As a payment of interest, and therefore, and therefore. no deduction and therefore no deduction in respect of no deduction in respect of such payment no deduction in respect of such payment will be allowed will be allowed <coughs> no deduction in respect of such conversion students no deduction in respect of such conversion will be allowed next line students however subsequently however subsequently when subsequently when the <coughs> subsequently when the converted portion of the principal amount is paid when the converted portion of the principal amount is paid then then <coughs> such payment such payment will be treated as will be treated as the payment towards the payment towards the interest amount the payment towards the interest amount and hence and hence 
the <coughs> assessee shall be allowed the deduction the assessee shall be allowed the deduction in the year in which in the year in which <coughs> the outstanding interest the outstanding interest amount has been paid the outstanding interest amount has been paid outstanding interest amount has been paid in the form of principal amount in the form of principal amount why i am saying in the form of principal amount because presently it is in the form of the principal amount presently it is in the form of the principal amount isn't it so that is the reason why in the form of the principal amount fine students fair enough so this is one thing that you will keep in mind here in now apart from that students there are like 40a i and all disallowed and there is one more 40b which is in respect of partnership form these two and the third one is a presumptive section so these three i will try to postpone it for the subsequent session and we will now come to the practical part of the question students <coughs> let's see the practical part of the question here in all of you question number 17 this is what i was suggesting here in so see they have given a question to all of you question number 17 which is in page number 287 page 287 what it says hari an individual carried on the business of purchase and sale of agricultural commodities like paddy wheat etc he borrowed loan from andhra pradesh state financial corporation and indian bank and has not paid interest as detailed there under <coughs> i'll tell you priyanka later towards the end now and has not paid interest as detailed here under andhra pradesh state financial corporation previous year 1819 and 1920 so that is a interest part indian bank previous year 1920 so andhra pradesh this state financial corporation 2 years indian bank 1 year 15 lakhs and 30 lakhs each or respectively so if you go here in carefully both apsfsc and indian bank while restructuring the loan facilities of hari during the year 1920 converted the above interest payable converted the above interest payable by hari to them as a loan repayable in 60 equal installment students so 60 equal installment <coughs> During the year under 31st March 2020 Hari paid 5 installment to APFSC and 3 installment to Indian Bank Hari claimed the entire interest of 45 lakhs as an expenditure while computing while computing the income from the head PGBP Okay so first of all we all know that what he has done just because in the year 1920 in the year 1920 that the conversion has taken place that the conversion has taken place he has taken the deduction i just now gave you the note and the note was what no deduction would be allowed in respect of the outstanding interest which has been converted no deduction would be allowed in respect of the outstanding interest which has been converted so just forget it no deduction students and subsequently when that outstanding interest amount has been paid as a principal amount subsequently when the outstanding interest amount has been paid as a principal amount so how much you have paid so they have given to you 
during the year 31st March by 31st March 2020 Hari paid five installment. So this is divided by 60 into five, and this is also divided by 60 into three. Divide by six. Divide by sixty into five, and the next one is divided by sixty into three. So this would be the total amount that they have that they have paid in the name of principal. In the name of principal, but is it it? But is it in substance? Is it in substance a uh, interest amount? And the answer is yes. In substance, whatever that pro rata payment of five and three has been done in the current period is in substance a payment towards the interest amount, and hence students. Hence what? It will be allowed as deduction. <coughs> it will be allowed as deduction, students. So how much will be allowed as deduction? 2,75,000. How you got this? For 5, if you do that, divide by 60, divide by 60 into 5. And for that 30 lakhs, divide by 3, divide by 60 into 3. You will get these amounts. You will get these amounts, students. Point. So keep this particular perspective in mind, students, over here in this context. Now then. <coughs> The other question, so just tick mark those questions which I am doing with you here in. So therefore, you just be very careful. This presumptive income, I am going to touch upon in the subsequent lecture. So any questions based on the presumptive income also, I will do it in the subsequent class. Now I come to your last category, which is so this is for depreciation. Please do this as a homework question. Ensure to do this. Mr. Venus engage in manufacture of pesticide. This is a depreciation question, actual cost. So this will be a good practice for all of you. Even the second question is a depreciation question. One and two is all about depreciation. Good practice. Those who want to have a practice on depreciation further. One and two is all about the depreciation. Coming to question number three. Coming to question number three. Let's deal with this. So 1 and 2, I am putting that as a homework, question number 1 and question number 2, okay, for depreciation part, just ensure to go through this. Let's come to question 3. Examine with reason the allowability of the falling expenses incurred by Mr. Manov, a wholesale dealer of commodities under the Income Tax Act 1961 while computing profit and gains from business or profession for the assessment year 2021. <coughs> Construction of school building in compliance with the CSR activity. Student CSR. Just now we were discussing something about CSR. Will the expenditure which is essentially in the nature of that CSR activity, will that be allowed to you as a deduction? Say. Will that be allowed to you as a deduction? Hmm. And the answer is no, it will not be allowed as deduction. Just now we have seen in 37.1, the issue also we have discussed, isn't it? So definitely as you are saying it correctly, it will be disallowed. Coming to point number two, purchase of building for the purpose of specified business of setting up and operating a warehousing facility for storage of food grains amounting to rupees four and a half lakhs. So students, this four and a half lakhs, 35 AD. 35 AD, remember the 35 AD? In point number 2. So will it be covered in th section 35 AD? And the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. Nishank is asking, sir, what is the difference between not allowed and disallowed? Not allowed means, technically speaking, it is not debited in your net profit. It is not debited debited to your net profit as per your accounting books. So if it is not debited and that expenditure is also not allowed as deduction under the head PGBP, so we will say it is not allowed. But something which is debited, but it is disallowed. What is the reason why it is disallowed? Say for example, bonus and commission. It is debited in your profit and loss account. Bonus and commission, if it is debited to your profit and loss account. Okay, but you have not made the actual payment at all. You have not made the payment of you have not made the actual payment at all. So therefore, as per 43B, as per 43B, what is that we are going to say? We are going to say that this bonus and commission will be disallowed. 
this bonus and commission will be disallowed. So that is what we are going to refer for bonus and commission to be disallowed. Coming to point number three, student. <coughs> Interest on loan paid to Mr. X, a resident, rupees fifty thousand, on which tax has not been deducted, not been deducted fruits. TDS has not been deducted. So interest on loan paid to Mr. X, this is forty A I A. Forty A I A. Interest on loan paid to Mr. X, rupees fifty thousand, on which tax has not been deducted. The sales for the previous year, eighteen nineteen. Was the rupees two zero two lakhs? Mr. X has not paid the tax, if any, on such interest. So what will happen, students, would be that this much of the amount of the interest on which TDS has not been deducted, we will see subsequently that this will be disallowed. Commodity transaction tax. Commodity transaction tax. Just just now we have seen, isn't it? Security transaction tax. Commodity transaction tax. Banking cash transaction tax is this allowed as deduction? And the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. <coughs> so students, herein, this interest part, students, any case, this thirty percent disallowed, forty A I A. This point number three, forty A I A, thirty percent is disallowed. So students, this is how we have done. As I told you, students, you don't have to remember the clause numbers and all. Just thirty six one will be sufficient. Thirty six one will be sufficient enough. You don't have to buy hard all these clause numbers. Fine. Coming to question number four, students. Question number four. Let's quickly run through to the question number four. Let's come to question number four. <coughs> Examine with reason the following for the following subdivision, whether the following statements are true or false, having regard to the provision of the Income Tax Act 1961. For a dealer in shares and securities, securities transaction tax paid in a recognised stock exchange is permissible business expenditure. Is permissible business expenditure? We have just now seen security transaction tax. Is it allowed as deduction under the PGBP? And the answer is yes. So it is allowed. It is specifically you will write in the reason. It is specifically allowed as a deduction under section thirty six one. That is the reason. It is specifically allowed as deduction under section thirty six. Even though you just make a reference of thirty six after thirty six, whatever is there, forget it. It is allowed as deduction under section thirty six. Even that will serve the purpose. Point two. Where a person follows mercantile system of accounting, an expenditure of rupees twenty five thousand. Has been allowed on accrual basis, and in a later year, students, in a later year, in respect of the said expenditure, SSC makes the payment of rupees twenty five thousand through a check crossed as and company rupees twenty five thousand can be can be the profit and gains of business. The question itself. Is not properly framed. Where a person <coughs> follows mercantile system of accounting and expenditure of twenty five thousand has been allowed on accrual basis, and in a later year, in respect of the said expenditure, S S C makes a payment of rupees twenty five thousand through a check crossed as and company rupees twenty five thousand can be the profit and the gains can be the profit and gains in the year of payment. <coughs> Can be the profit and gains. So there is some something missing. Words are missing. This is not. This part is something which has to be clarified. What they are trying to say can be the profit and gains. I am not in a position to connect it properly. Anyway, true. Whatever the concept that we have learned right now, just focus only on that. Okay. So the question is not properly framed. Something is missing in between. Can be the profit and gains. What does it mean? Coming to point number three, but anyway, this is just on the basis of whatever we have done just now. It is in the subsequent year. So if it is a subsequent year, forty A three A will come into play. Point number three. <coughs> it is mandatory to provide for depreciation under section thirty two. Yes, students, mandatory. Yes, it is mandatory. 
depreciation allowance under 32 is mandatory students depreciation allowance under section 32 is mandatory there is one specific section but as i told you you don't remember the section number just it is mandatory yes it is mandatory point number 4 the medical premium paid to gic the medical premium paid to gic by mr lomesh for his employee by a draft on 27 december 2019 is deductible expenditure yes it is deductible only point is only point just now we did only point is that it should not be paid in cash other than cash so yes it is allowed point number 5 under section 35 dda amortization of expenditure incurred under the eligible vrs at the time of retirement alone can be done only when he retires there is no such question at all only when he retires primary under 35 dda it is allowed as deduction primary in this regard <coughs> in the year in which it is paid so yes in the year in which it is paid plus 5 years the allowance would be for 5 years period so that is one thing which would be there in this regard so what you will say under 35 dda amortization of expenditure incurred under the eligible vrs at the time of retirement alone can be done retirement alone is not there payment <coughs> making payment incurred in making payment to the employees you are retired students you are retired but you have not been paid whether amortization can it be done no so therefore the payment is a criteria only when it has been paid primarily that the amortization will begin amortization in five equal annual installment point number 6 students be one thing i should tell you whenever these extreme words are used in the question this is just through my experience i am telling you whenever these extreme words like allo only because of this that this is there only because of this that this is there like that or oh, alone that is what they have used over here whenever they make this ex extreme observation on a particular point 90% or i'll say 95% the answer is incorrect the answer would be false the statement is false primarily the statement that they are making is false 90 to 95% this is just my observation i'm telling you whenever they make this these extreme observation what is that extreme observation that only because of this that this is happening so generally that statement is incorrect and that is one thing which i can just let you know through the some experience kind of a thing <coughs> point number 6 an existing ssc engaged in trading activity can claim additional depreciation is additional depreciation available for a person who is in the trading activity is the additional depreciation applicable to a person who is in the trading activity is the question and the answer has to be false and the answer has to be false yes students coming to question number 5 now let's come to question 5 examine with reasons the allowability of the following expenses under the income tax act while computing income from business or profession for the assessment year 2021 provision made on the basis of actual valuation for payment of gratuity students whether the gratuity is it allowed on the basis of the provision whether the gratuity is it allowed on the basis of the provision and the answer is no we have seen there is a disallowance under 40a7 there is a disallowance under 40a7 moreover this gratuity is covered in 43b moreover this gratuity is covered in 43b and as per 43b the deduction is allowed only in the year in which the payment has been done only in the year in which the payment has been done and that exactly how it has to be considered students so point number 1 provision made on the basis of the actual valuation for payment of the gratuity 5 lakhs so not allowed provision disallowed point number 2 purchase of oil seed students purchase of oil seeds of rupees 50000 in cash from a farmer on a banking day from a farmer on a banking day so 
From whom? From a farmer. So, can we say it is covered in Rule 6 DD? Students, is it covered in Rule 6 DD from a farmer? Is it an agriculture produce oil seeds? Agriculture produce oil seeds? And the answer is yes. And the answer is yes. It is an agriculture produce and you are making the payment to the farmer directly. Just now we, say, we have read in Rule 6 DD. Payment to the farmer or the producer or the cultivator or the grower of the agricultural produce that is covered in Rule 6 DD. Meaning thereby that amount will be allowed as deduction. The expenditure will be allowed as deduction. Payment of rupees 50. Sorry. Point number 3 students we have not touched upon but this you can just see in 40A. When you read 40A, I, uh, 40A, I think double 2 or double 3. Uh, double 3, I have made an observation over this. Tax on non monetary perquisite will be allowed as deduction. You will just read it at your end, this part. Point number 3, students, you can read it at your end. I will come to point number 4. Payment of rupees 50,000. Payment of rupees 50,000 by using credit card for fire insurance. Obviously, so it is in per prescribed electronic mode. Is it a prescribed electronic mode? And the answer is yes. So if it is a prescribed electronic mode, therefore, will it be allowed to you as a deduction? Will it be allowed to you as a deduction? Point number four. And the answer is yes. This is a prescribed electronic mode. And accordingly, it shall be allowed to you as a deduction. After that, point number five. Banking day or non-banking day doesn't matter, but it is paid to whom? In cash, but it is paid to whom? To the farmer, that is only relevant. Paid to farmer, that is only relevant. Point number 5. Salary payment of rupees 4 lakhs to Mr. X outside India by a company without deduction. So, this is also students. You, these are things which I have not touched upon right now. So, since I have not touched upon right now, if you have done it, you would have known the answer. This is all about 40 AI and all. That 40 AI series. So, that is in 40 AI series students. That is covered over there. So, I think if those who have done it, they would have answered it. Otherwise, wait for tomorrow. Point number 6. Payment made in cash. Rupees for 30,000 to a transporter in a day for carriage of goods. Carriage of goods. If they would have said carriage of passenger then. If they would have said carriage of passenger then what would have happened? Would you still would have allowed the deduction? Would you still would have allowed the deduction? <coughs> and the answer is no. For carriage of passenger students. For carriage of passenger then you would have taken the threshold of 10,000 not 35,000. For carriage of passenger, like Ola company, Uber company and all. So, if supposedly you have hired these company or some any passenger transport companies for transportation of your employees to the other locations. So, for them the threshold would be rupees 10,000. For them the threshold would be rupees 10,000 and not 35,000. That is the threshold. The 35 threshold, the, the threshold of rupees 35,000 is applicable only in respect of only in respect of the which company the company which is these are the companies that we are talking about it the companies which are <coughs> the companies which are the the which are in the which are in the business of the carriage of goods and all the carriage of the goods question number six students Examine with reason whether the following statement are true or false with regard to the provision of the Income Tax Act 1961. Payment made in respect of a business expenditure incurred on the 16th February 2020 for Rs. 25,000 through a check duly crossed as and company is hid by the provision of 48.3. Yes, it is hid by the provision of 48.3 because you have to write account pay check. Account pay. Okay, only a cross check will not be sufficient. You have to write what? Account pay. You have to write what students? Account pay. Okay, so therefore it will be disallowed. <coughs> Point number B. 
point one of point B. It is a condition precedent to write off in the books of accounts the amount due from the debtors to claim the deduction for bad debt. Just now I taught you, students. Just now I have taught you this point. There are two conditions for the purpose of deduction of bad debts. And which are those two conditions? Condition number one. The amount should have been considered as the income of the SSC earlier. The amount should be considered as the income of the SSC earlier. That is first. And that's the reason why sales to debtors account. Sorry, debtors to sales account. And second one is what? Second one is that the debtors account is written off as a bad debt. The debtors account is written off as a bad debt in your books of accounts. In your books of accounts. So whether the write-off is it a condition for the purpose of claiming of the deduction of bad debts? And the answer is yes. Point number two. Now this point number two again is of TDS, but still let's see. Failure to deduct TDS at source in accordance with the provision. Failure to deduct the TDS at source in accordance with the provision of Chapter 17B inter alia from the amount payable to a non-resident students to a non-resident means who is the receiver who is the payee who is the payee or who is the receiver it is a non-resident so i have not deducted the tds i have not deducted the tds will it result into disallowances while computing the business income will it result and the answer is yes it will be disallowed and with section 40 ai 40 ai Yes, it will be disallowed under section 40 i for inference so students this is what we have done it here in up till now for your homework students question number one question number two is what you can do of this solved question which is in respect of depreciation tomorrow i'll just do some of the disallances part of it and also presumptive income i'll see so that i can also solve tomorrow some more question and mo mostly students then saturday we'll start with capital gains Saturday will start with capital gains. Fine, students. So I'll see you then tomorrow. You revise question number one and question number two. Do it. And I'll see you tomorrow then. Nine o'clock would be the timing. That time. We'll meet tomorrow at 9 p.m. And then we will try to finish it off the remaining part. We'll finish it off the remaining part. Three rounds, I think even uh, Ravi sir is not keeping well herein so he in fact there is uh, unfortunately uh, in his family uh, somebody expired because of covid so in that came just four days back so because of this covid his uncle has expired and that is the reason why i think uh, then all the rituals has to be done so according these people would be not so he is not in a uh, available one and also not in the proper uh, this thing so i that is the part for the uh, this one auditing part which i just came to know and that is one thing which i can just communicate with all of you and uh, other subjects as it has been there i think law will start uh, with purnavas sir is going to start on 10th I suppose so his timing I think is in the evening and uh, then uh, Tharun Raj sir is also due for his IDT part so I think all these are as scheduled so this is one thing which has been there Ashwini is income from house property that is done no not yet I have started directly I have done in my initial lectures the basic concept scope of total income residential status and the exempt income these are the topic which I have done in my initial lectures. So these are the topic which I have done in my initial lectures. Okay. The scope of the total income, residential status, exemption. These are the income, these are the topic which I have done in the initial lecture. And directly we have started with PGBP. Then we will do capital gains because these are the two big heads. Students, see, these are the two big heads. After that small heads are there, we can finish it off fast. Quick revision can be done. But the fact is that the big topics, if we do it thoroughly initially, so then the pressure is very less later on. 
the small small house property and all we can all discuss quickly and do some uh, areas of tricky areas couple of questions we can finish it off move on that space that we can maintain isn't it so that is one thing which has been there so let's take the bigger part earlier earlier the better so then for saturday i'll start with capital gains okay see you then students good night to all of you and i'll see you tomorrow night at 9 pm thank you